Hope everyone's doing well today. And welcome to the Tech Talk for May 2019. This Tech Talk is centered around Inventor Custom Content Library publication. So our agenda for today is a brief introduction. Then we're going to talk about what Tech Talks are. We're going to introduce this month's Tech Talk. We're going to set our learning objectives for the Tech Talk. We're going to do a demonstration and an overview. We're also going to talk about some upcoming Tech Talks. We're going to talk about the CAD Club Academy. And we're going to then do a brief Q&A. So to begin with an introduction to myself, my name is Robert Savage. I'm a pilot instructor and education specialist on the manufacturing side. I have been in the mechanical design industry for more than 30 years, have been working with the inventor software for 20 years now. I've also worked with several other pieces of software. All right. So what is a CAD Club Academy's Tech Talk? Well, a Tech Talk is a one hour overview of a topic where we basically do what we sometimes refer to as a lunch and learn. So we'll take a particular topic and do a one hour cover of that topic. So today's topic is inventor custom library creation. And so creating custom libraries is either very important to you or not needed by you. Um, I find that most people fit into one of those two categories. And I say it that way because not everybody uses custom content for their library. But those people that do, it's very important that they get the information that they need in there. Okay. So our topics for today and our learning objectives are first creating a new custom library within Content Center. Then we're going to talk about making customer or specification specific libraries. Then we're going to add custom parts to the Content Center. And then we're going to add a third party part library to a custom library. So to begin with, we start here actually in the project file. The project file controls our libraries. Now the first rule of a project file is I can't modify a project file or anything in the project file as long as I have files open. So I have to make sure that before I get in and start making any changes to these things, that I have the projects or the files within a project closed. So once I get into my project explorer here, there's a button on the lower right hand side that allows me to review the current libraries, how my libraries are set up, and even create custom libraries within that. So this is what it looks like, okay? So there's several things in here of importance. So first of all, up here at the very top, it says that I'm using the Inventor desktop content. In other words, my libraries are stored locally. And then below that, it shows me where they're stored. Now by locally, they're not necessarily setting on my C drive. I could have them setting on a location on a server 
and have everyone pointing to that same location. That's how I create a shared library without um, using Vault to do it. Doesn't mean I can't use Vault to do it, but sometimes there's other ways of doing it other than just having information in the Vault. Now, in here, if you'll notice, there are two forms of libraries in there. There's locked and unlocked, okay? The locked libraries are the libraries that come stock with the software. Any changes I make are never made to that actually original stock library. They're always made to a custom library. So therefore, what I have to do is either activate or have active a custom library. Well, if I don't have a custom library, then I can easily create one. Now, here's another thing to point out about this. If I use Vault and I want to create a custom library, I actually need to check the project out first. Because again, I'm actually modifying the project when I do this. If I don't check the project out, then it won't let me complete this operation. So what I do is this second icon in here allows me to create a new library. Once I select on that, it'll ask me to give it a display name and then a file name. Well, the file name can be a little bit more descriptive than just the display name. But by default, the file name is going to be the same as the display name. Now, once I have that library in there created, then I can start adding information to that. Well, there's two ways of adding information to that. I can customize existing content. So if I go into my content center or into my libraries for my content center, once I've created my own full library area, I can then copy information to that new location. So by copying information to that new location, I then have the ability to edit that information. So that's another way of creating custom content. The other way is to actually have your own component and publish that into the content center information. Now, one other thing that they pointed out in that previous slide that was kind of important to note is there was a large list of libraries in there. I can also go in and control which libraries are available to me by simply unchecking the ones I don't want. Okay. Um, now, the way you set where this information is pulled from is in the, or where these libraries are pulled from is in the application options. Okay, so if I go into the application options on the content center tab, you'll see in there, if I'm using the inventor desktop content, where it's pulling those libraries from. Now the default on that is going to be being pulled from the C drive under your program data. If you want that pulling from somewhere else, then you pull it from somewhere else. So let's do a brief demonstration on that process. So I'm actually going to go over here to Inventor. There we go. And so in here now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to look at my libraries. So the first place I'm going to do is under my Getting Started, I'm going to go to my project. And this is my current active project. Right now it's a single user project and I have it checked out to me. Well, actually it's not vaulted, so it doesn't have to be checked out. But if I want to come in here 
and configure my content center libraries, I can select here. And again, I have a list of libraries here and I can easily control which libraries are available to me. Okay, so these libraries include things like um, Inventor ANSI, Inventor DIN, features. Uh, as you can see, my GOST is not available. Uh, ISO, uh, JIS, other Parker, routed systems, sheet metal. All of these are available libraries. The green symbols down here are my custom libraries that I have available to me. All right, so I've got one here that's my content center. I've got uh, content center files. I've also got uh, my library, which is the one I typically use. All right. So if I want to create a new one, though, I can tell it to create a new library, set the name and the file, the display name and the file name for that. So if I come in here and call, let's say I set up a demo library, and but I want the actual file name to be called demo files. And then I say, okay here, it should add that to my list and put a check mark by it. Now, what I did was I went over and did a control select of that link there to actually take me to those libraries so that you can see that those exist. Now, the other thing that I want to point out is these get rather large, okay? Now, these up here that you see, uh, the AI 2019 ones, they do not change. Again, those are read-only. Those are not files that I'm going to modify. The only ones I'm going to modify are these down here. They're still relatively small, but I do have the ability to modify those as necessary. So now I've also got tools in here to do what's called a library transfer. That's if I'm transferring from desktop content to vaulted content or from vaulted content to desktop content. Now, one thing I will point out is that you can't just randomly switch back and forth uh, unless you have the files locally and in the vault because you actually have to have vault access to switch that information around. And you have to have the right access. In other words, you have to have admin privileges in order to be able to switch that information back and forth. Okay. And then over here we have what's called an update tool, which allows me to update my content. I have a delete library. So if I wanted to take one of these out, I could select on it and delete it. I can also look at the library properties, what the name of it is, uh, what the file name is, the permission level, and the date created. All right. So again, if I want to go a step further and go over here to the Tools tab and go into Application Options, over here in my Content Center tab, I can see that um, my Inventor Desktop content, and this is the location for it. So again, that's that same location. If I have information in the Vault, I can access it using the Vault server. Now, again, when we refer to Vault Server here, we're talking about the ADMS Server Console, which means that your libraries would be stored on the server and accessed through the ADMS Server Console. So if I need something out of Content Center or need to push something into Content Center, I have to have the right Vault permissions to do it again. So. OK. So. What I'll do now is I'll actually switch back to the slides and go over a few more things before I get in to the rest of my demonstration here. So what we want to do now is talk about copying a library. And copying a library is what I referred to when I said 
that I could take existing information, copy it to my custom location, and then go in and start modifying that information. So the way I do that again, and I recommend doing this without anything open, is first of all, have your project set up, have your vault set up, and then from your tools tab again, over where the applications options are, you'll see there's a content center area. In there, you have an editor option. In the editor option there is where I can go in and copy information from the stock libraries into the custom libraries. So if I look at this again, here in here, these have similar tools to Content Center uh, as far as the one you would use to place information. I can also look at libraries in here. So from my drop down and from my filter, I can adjust what information I'm looking at. All right, so here they're saying they've got a My Custom Library, and right now there's nothing in it. So if I also had an ANSI library or looked at my inventor ANSI, which is locked here, I would see information in there. Okay, once I see the information I want, I can right click on it and say copy to or save copy as, which would copy the information. Now, I can go as far down as a single file or a single component and copy it over, or I can copy over what's called a family. And a family would be, let's say, um, could be 3816 hex head bolt. Okay. Um, so if I go to the 3816 hex head bolt, right click on that and copy. I can copy that entire library and all variations of that 3816 hex head bolt over to my custom library. Or I could go down and say, all right, I just want to go all the way down to the 3816 hex head bolt uh, two inch long. And I just want to copy that one over. Okay, so I can copy at different levels. It just depends on what you're trying to do there. Once I've, cop once I've said save copy as or copy to, then I would select what library I want to copy it into. That sets a marker in the system that says that this is now pulled from the custom content. So now when I go into Content Center to place something from there, it doesn't look in the stock location. It looks in the new custom location for that. So let's go do that real quick. So if I come in here again on the tools tab over here in my content center area, I've got the editor here, which is going to bring up my content center editor. And right now I'm looking at merged view. But if you'll notice here, I also have my library. I have a test library. Oops, let's go up here. And these are my standard libraries. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this writing to the test. Or actually, no, I'm going to go to the library I want to pull from first. So if I go up here to the uh, inventor ANSI folder and I look at that, and if I come in here, I've got tube and pipe components, then I can go down here to fittings. Now, again, here I'm using a filter just to see ANSI information, and I can even go into, let's say, couplings here. All right, so once I'm in couplings, now I can go in and find the coupling that I want. Let's say that I want this one and I want the entire library of it. Right click on it. I've got the save copy as and I've got copy to. Okay, if I want to keep it as is, 
then I can say that I want to copy to. So that doesn't mean I can't go inside of it and change things in there. But again, the naming and configuration of it is going to stay the same. I'm just going to go in and change data on the inside of it. Okay. Where a save copy as creates a new version of that. So for example, if RAND had its own version of this that is based off the ASTMD uh, 2467, then I could take this and do a save copy as and give it a new name and then go in and adjust what information I want in there. But if I simply want to copy this one to test, Now, if I go down to my test library, I have that information in there. Notice that link symbol. That means the data is linked back to the original location, but I can now go in here and change what I want in here. So if I want to come in here and change the part number on this, I can come in here and start changing the part number. All right. Now, at this point, all I have, all I'm looking at here is just stock information, all right? If I want to change it, I can go back and change it, all right? Now, there's two things that you need to note about this information. One is, if you'll notice, there's two different colors of text here. This is just what I call flat text. In other words, it's a size, it's a parameter. Uh, all of this information is tied back to parameters within the file. Okay. This is what I call, is what's commonly referred to as custom. So if I come in, oh, let me go into the edit mode first. All right. So if I come in here and look at this, this information is based off of an expression, okay? So if you see blue text in there, that means it's based off of an expression, which is a combination of things. So what I have here is I have that initial name here, and then I have designation. Well, designation is a field in here which is here, which is actually based off of size designation. Okay, so that's how they build some of this information is kind of like Excel combining fields. All right. So again, if I want to start updating information or changing information, I can start changing it here. Now, if I go back into an assembly and start placing something from here, then it would automatically go into the custom area. All right, so now the next thing I want to talk about is publishing custom parts. Publishing custom parts has to really, in some ways, do with I parts or as a single part. But when I've got an I part, I've got properties in here that are being updated and modified from a table. So you create this table in here. Then in that table, I have my values that I want in there, and I start updating that information based off of that. Well, if I have a table-driven component and I want to make a custom part off of that with all my variations being added, then I can do that. But first I have to have a proper, uh, properly constructed I part. In other words, I have to have uh, the information set up in there, the fields, the part numbers. I have to have keys. They have to be tied to actual properties, okay? Once I have that, then I can go in 
into my editor here and I can create my own category in there. All right, so if I wanna go in and create my own category for a piece of information, I can right click in there and say that I want to create a category. Once I do that, I can then come in and I really, at this point, I need to open the part, verify I've got all the information in there the way I want, even this, and especially if it's an I part. And I've got two variations. So if, again, if I go to my application options, um, or I'm sorry, my manage tab, I have a content center folder or content center section in there. Inside that, I've got two different options. I've got publish part and batch publish. Publish part is for a single part. Batch publish publishes a set of parts in one process. All right. Once you do that, or once you determine which one you're doing, then you have to select the appropriate library to put it in and the language that you're using, then you have to set where you want it to publish to. All right, so what category does this fit into? Again, you've got to catch all of other parts in there if need be, or if you've created a custom category, then you can put it in from there. Once you've done that, then you start mapping your properties to the information that you want in a particular table. So for example, if I've got um, tube and pipe components, I have particular parameters that they're looking for. And I need to match my information that I have to those parameters. Things like OD, thread, designations, all of those top things are parameters. And I can start matching that information up so that the parameters and properties that I have fill in the, the table for my custom content. Now, um, you also have what's called family keys. These are kind of your designators and your highest level of information that you're looking for, okay? Um, so for example, here, they've went ahead and pulled forward those keys. Then you wanna set the family name, family description, and family folder name. So what am I calling the family? And again, since I've got multiple variations of it, it's a family. What's the description for that family and then the folder name? Does it fit within a standard organization, a standard or a particular manufacturer? And do I have a standard revision? Standard revision comes in very handy, especially if I go back and make a change to something and I want to be able to note which variation of information I have. All right, once I've completed that, then it will give me a thumbnail preview all right, that thumbnail preview is very important to the system because the thumbnail preview is what it's going to use in Content Center and what it's going to show when you go in there to place information. So from there, now you have your columns in here. And this is how you go in and associate, or when you go in and associate information, this is basically it's saying, what's the column name? 
and what is the column caption? So the column caption is what you're going to see in here when you go into place it. Okay. So let's go out and take a look at that information. So I'm actually going to take kind of a little step here in addition uh, before I go on. And I'm going to still use tube and pipe and fittings, but what I actually want here uh, is I'm going to set this as a union. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to tell it that I want to create a category and I'm going to call that category union. Right. Now I can set up an image for that or whatever, but I'm fine with just a folder name as long as it has a description in there that I can use. So now in there, I have a folder for union. All right. Now I'm going to say done. I'm going to open up my file. Okay. Now right now, this is just a standard part. Okay. It's got one body, it's based off of a, rev, a revolve with a fillet, some chamfers, or not, um, some um, extrusions here to cut grooves in this. But if I want to make an eye part out of this, then the first place I'm going to do is come in here into the properties. Okay, and I'm going to set the properties that are important to me. Now, the person creating this used a couple of user defined parameters, which are fine by me. I don't have a problem with those, uh, including things like OD, uh, diameter one, two, and three. And then we have length and radius. So I'll let those user defined parameters help drive what I'm doing here. So if I come over to the manage and I tell it that I want to create an eye part of this, if you'll notice these named parameters, it went ahead and pulled over for me. All right, it knows that since these are named parameters, then they've kind of got to be important for me. All right. Now I'm also going to come in here to like OD, which is going to be my primary sort and I'm going to say that that's my first key and this just designates um, really kind of the uh, primary information here and uh, I think three keys is plenty here now I can also define part numbers in here all right and then I can come in and say, all right, I want to insert three rows in this. Um, let's see. Now this is probably not going to work without adjusting these here. I didn't really look to see what was going on with that. Oops. but I'm going to create some variations of this. Uh, I'm also going to set up some variations in length in these just so that you can see this. All right. Now, once I've done this, I can come in and verify this information, make sure it's going to come across the way that I want. Then when I'm done, I say, okay, and it creates this as an I part. 
Okay, I can tell it's an I part because of the table up here. And then I can come in here and say, all right, I want to check the different sizes on this to make sure this is going to fit the way that I want. And as you can see, that sets up my different sizes for that. So now I have three sizes for this and I can even come back in here and I'll go back to the first one here. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish and I, I'm going to publish this part. All right. Now, there's also a secondary set of information in here also. One is setting up what's called publish feature. All right, so the publish feature here allows me to come in, say, okay, this is what I'm publishing. And um, I should have pulled that out. What I should have done was sent this. I wanted this in a different. Yeah, this will still work. Now, once I've gone through the published feature information, what it does is it pulls in those features off of that into what it uses for connections and things like that. All right. Now, so I'm going to move on here with the publish part on this which is going to allow me to come in and say, okay, where am I putting it again? And then what is my language format on that? Say next, uh, let's see, I put that under tube and pipe, uh, fittings, and union. Okay, I already have a unions, but I set union strictly so that I would know this was my folder that I created. Say next here. And then here is where I'm going to come in and start setting my nominal size. Um, I'm going to set my nominal size by OD. And then I can come in and set things uh, like the mating pipe sizes. Um, All right, uh, actually, I'll go with All right, so I can set the parameters that are important to me in here. Once I've set that, I can then come in next and say, okay, what are my key columns? And I'll leave this pretty much as is here. Say next, here's where I define the family name. Um, family description. Now, does it fit into a standard? Uh, yes, it kind of fits into the organization of ANSI, uh, and I can even put a standard in there. I don't, I don't have to. All right, and then I'm going to call this um, standard revision A. Next, here's my preview. It's pulling that just from the screen. And then I can say publish to put that information in there. All right, this will now tell me I've published that successfully. So if I come in here now and I'm going to start 
a new assembly. And I'll just go straight to the place from Content Center. And then defaulted back to my union air, or my fittings area where I can go into union here, grab my new component, and then select what size I want of that. All right. So that was a quick overview of how I create custom content. Now there is one other thing that I want to show you here, and that is now that I've tested this to make sure it works, if I want, I can close out of it and then come back over here to my Content Center Editor. Let's let that update. Sorry, I put that in my library, not test. So if I come in here now and I say that I want to, I can edit the family properties, all right, which if I say edit family properties here, it's going to have me come in again and adjust these family properties, including my parameter mapping, my thumbnail, and any links that I may have. If I decide I want to edit the family table, then that means I'm editing the lower information and can even come in here and say, all right, I want to copy. Uh, add in additional sizes here. Now, if you'll notice, these are yellow and lightning bolts on here, meaning I need to come in and before I actually push that information in, I need to, um, or before I can use it, I need to make sure that I update that information. Um, okay. So on these, the only thing I wanted to change here was the length on those. So let's make sure that I got this information right. Then I can say apply. Oh, non unique file names. Ah, that's what happened there. Sorry, I didn't change these things here. So it was it was catching me in an error that I made. So so those are published successfully. Now I have five versions of it. Okay. So again, I can pull information in here, and once I've got it published, then I can go in and start adding additional things to that. So I have, uh, in regards to that now the ability to come in and now I have five sizes of this instead of just the three that I originally had. Okay. Now let's talk about one other variation in this. that comes up occasionally and that is in the editor here I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to do what's called a material guide All right so a material guide allows me to come in and create a new family um, or add a material to the new family um, so I could create a new family 
that is independent that is an independent family with a new material uh, or I can link it back to the parent or I can add a parent with a new family member. Um, so I'm going to add a new material here. I'm going to add ABC. And and if you'll notice here with my material names, I can do them as a suffix. Uh, I can also add that to the part number. So now it starts publishing that information. And so now if you look at it, it has whole new variations of this, of all five of those, just with new materials. Now, again, remember, I did this outside of having any file open. It tends to work a lot better if I start putting information in uh, in that format. Okay. All right. Now, that concludes our demonstration on Content Center for now. Um, if you have any questions, let me know um, or start putting it in the window, uh, and I'll address that here in a few. So, but before then, let's go ahead and talk about next month's Tech Talk. So in June, we're doing our next Tech Talk, which is what we've fondly named as Analysis Paralysis. So when we talk about Analysis paral Paralysis, we're talking about overanalyzing and overthinking and sometimes overstrengthening a component to make, to add too much to it, more than it needs to be, okay? Now, you don't want to go too low, but you can also have a negative effect by going too high on that. So that's what we'll take a look at in June. All right. So also, this is brought to you by CAD Club Academy. Uh, where you can, for one set rate, take as many training classes as you want uh, as an individual, but there are also corporate rates also. Um, if you'd like more information on that, go to the web link there that you see. Also, if you have any questions regarding the content and comments, shoot me an email. My name is Robert Savage. Uh, my email is rsavage at ran.com. I'd be glad to help in any way that I can. Just let me know. Um, so based on that, thank you. Um, we would normally take questions at this point, uh, but this is actually being pre-recorded. Um, something has come up and I need to travel, so I'm pre-recording this. So if you have any questions, email them to me. Uh, I'll be glad to address them. So thank you for attending and hope you have a great day.